Okay, it's December 5th, 7 o'clock in the morning. Oh, we got a nice cold temperature here, 23 degrees. That's colder than even said. And you can probably hear the garbage trucks in the background. Yeah, a nice 23 degrees. I could have probably even slept in an extra hour and got up at 8 o'clock. See, off in the distance there, maybe. I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not. Yeah, there you can see it. The sun's getting about ready to rise. And I'll show you my little trick for getting my bike started, even in sub-zero weather. See those lights I got on there? I've got a timer hooked up. That's the timer right there. It's a heavy-duty timer that can carry some pretty good amps. And then I've got, ooh, one of them is burnt out. I had two heat lamps. Guess I'll have to buy another one. Well, I got one on the bike. So I guess I'll be stopping by the hardware store and getting another heat lamp. But anyway, that heats up the crankcase and the top part of the engine. Keep it warm enough to start, hopefully. Let's get an odometer reading before we start. Set some of my stuff over here. And for the odometer reading, I've got a nice flashlight. I would suggest too if you're starting early in the morning, get yourself. Uh, I'm gonna have to move the bike out a little bit. Too tight between the bikes. I had to leave room for the lamp, so. Okay, I'll move the bike out. I'll take the odometer reading. Okay, we have odometer reading. Let me get the light so it doesn't glare into it. 39836.8. Three nine eight three six point eight. Can barely see the sun peeking over. That's my strategy, at least for trying to catch the cold. Because an hour after sunrise, it starts rising real quickly. My gosh, they got a lot of traffic down there. Thought the teachers were on strike this week. Well, it could be the teachers are going in to walk the picket lines. They were yesterday, they were out all up and down the highway, even along places that were a couple of miles away from the schools. Go to the end of the road here and I'll show you. They're probably out there picketing still. So during my ride today, I wanted to address some emails I've gotten, and I think every year I get similar emails, or pretty much the same emails, asking about things that we've talked about in the past and how we've decided to deal with them in the Polar Bear Challenge. Things like, uh, why don't you guys consider wind chill? Um, is, why don't you consider deducting points for heated gear or heated hand grips or do you consider that cheating? What about extra points for riding in snow? So I did get several emails like I said and how we addressed those things over the years was basically we just figured there was no easy way to deal with that. For example, wind chill. Now I live in the Chicagoland area and we pretty much always have about a 10 mile per hour breeze out of the west, sometimes 15, 20. Nice steady wind. So what if I decide to go on my ride and ride towards the west? I got no windshield because I don't use a windshield. I just don't care for them. And if I'm riding towards the west, I'm riding into the wind. So 40 miles per hour plus a 20 mile per hour wind, I get credit for 60 miles an hour wind chill, but then if I turn on that same ride to the left, I got nothing but side wind, and if I turn again and head back east, I could actually match my speed to the wind and have almost like a uh, riding in no wind. So how would you even figure that out during a ride? It could change so many times. And the same thing with snow. If you want to give extra points for riding in the snow, well, how about if you rode in hard packed snow and I rode in slick wet snow? I don't see any teachers out on the picket lines yet. Yeah, 
it would be just nothing but arguments and could you imagine the judge already having to keep track of maybe 20 guys that are currently active and all their temperatures and mileage and hand those off to the guy that does statistics and still having to figure out exactly everybody's wind chill, depth of snow, what kind of snow. I mean, and then you got the fact some people could cheat about it too. I mean, who's to say? It's just based on people's word and, and your own honor. I mean, I try to be as accurate as possible. I even, the first year when I realized the type of thermometer I used was not the proper type of thermometer, I actually disqualified myself as a judge the first year because I was using an infrared thermometer and I didn't realize till I researched up to it and uh, talked to my pal RC62, which knows a little bit about those things that uh, I was not measuring air temperature. I was just measuring reflected infrared radiation on objects, which may or may not match the ambient air temperature. You have some objects that'll reflect infrared from other objects, so you could actually get a, a higher reading than normal or you could get a lower reading than normal. I found out later when I went out and tested it after I realized it wasn't accurate, I did a test on the sky and I just uh, pointed up at the sky and got minus, minus 76 degrees. So I disqualified myself, even though I'd already had my three rides and previously had qualified because I didn't think in my own mind I could really stand behind the temperatures. That was just my decision, but if somebody really wanted to cheat, I mean, they could do. We've got some pretty clever people in the community that could do it all on green screen. I mean, they'd probably never even have to step outside their house and actually go on a ride for the Polar Bear Challenge. They could use edited footage from other stuff, splice it together. Like somebody men uh, mentioned on my last video, which was the first day of the polar bear ride where I missed it by one degree. They said, oh, you could have just stuck it in a freezer for a few seconds. Yeah, I could have, but then to me, it wouldn't have been a, a ride that I earned. You know, I, if I wear a patch, I mean, it's one thing if you just buy a patch. Everybody in the store can buy a patch or a sticker or a cup or whatever like that. But if you put a sticker on your bike or you... Uh, so a patch on your jacket should be something you legitimately earn. So the, ba the basic overall answer is I think primarily just uh, we could make this next to impossible for the judges to deal with by making it too complicated and then we wouldn't even be able to have anybody to judge the contest. I want to keep it simple enough that every year we can get somebody willing to come forward and volunteer to judge it so we have to make their life easier. And the fact that it's a challenge, not a contest. There are no prizes, so if you cheat, you've not cheated anybody else out of anything because there's nothing to win. Uh, some years, if we have people pony up enough money, sometimes the either a judge or a member will cover the price of a sticker or a patch for each member. Sometimes not. It just depends on who wants to come forward. I mean, we've we've had generous people that have run side contests in the past or picked up cost of stuff like... Uh, Aeroliner 750, Sergeant Markins, Shin J. June, all of those people in past years have, out of their own pocket, put bucks forward to help out the challenge, but that's just out of the generosity of their own heart. And I'm sure, like most years, somebody will come forward this year and do the same thing. But yeah, if somebody feels the necessity to, to try to cheat to claim they won the Polar Bear Challenge, they didn't really, I mean, they didn't really do anything to hurt me. They're just hurting themselves, so. Ooh, I should have put the uh, handlebar mitts on today, probably. Even these gauntlet mittens aren't really nice and toasty right now at this speed. Now see, I'm headed right now in a southerly direction at about 50 miles per hour. It's still, I imagine it's still 23 degrees. The sun isn't risen that much, so risen, risen that much. So this is some pretty good wind chill. And what I'm using to protect my neck, other than my beard, which actually, believe it or not, a full beard is very effective is a large size fleece balaclava that's squished into like an accordion kind of deal. So it seals really good. I'm not getting hardly any air 
coming in around my neck at all and I'm not wearing one of those helmet skirts that's attached to the helmet itself. My concern with that, although I can't say I've ever actually tried one, my concern is they would flop around a lot in the wind and actually just by that, just by moving around, they would create air currents around my neck and make my neck cold, but it's no problem whatsoever. I think we will turn around about here. We're getting up near the expressway and traffic's gonna get pretty heavy this time of day. People going to work. This is an industrial park. It used to be the back building. They just refaced it. It used to be a Kmart. Wow, people are in a hurry today to get to work. Well, I guess if he was supposed to be at work at 7 o'clock, he's probably running pretty late. But yeah, this was a Kmart. And then later on, Kmart moved to the other side of the river and took over a store that used to be a venture. And that, in my opinion, was one of the worst places to open a store because there just wasn't any traffic in that area the way the shopping center was laid out. And that only lasted about six months and they closed, so we don't even have a Kmart in the area anymore. Go clear up to Crystal Lake to go to Kmart. <sighs> well, at least the roads are nice and dry and clear. I think they've absorbed so much heat because this has been the first day that it's been this cold that these roads themselves are probably still fairly warm. They don't even seem in the least bit slick. I don't have any traction problems at all. Not that I'm going to do a slam on the brake skid to test it, but they feel pretty good. I think if there's not a lot of traffic coming back this way, I'm going to try to keep it around 40, 45. Ending mileage, 39.845. Point eight three nine eight four five point eight.